Hi, this is T. Payton. Um, hey, I was doing, I'm just finishing up a project and I thought I'd make a little tutorial on what I did to finish up a project. Um, so this is a simple little thing, voiceover, just an instruction on how to use a mold test kit in your house. This company called Immunolytics. Um, so uh, I have a couple things I need to do. Um, first of all, I already made this into a compound clip so I can kind of mix it well. So let me just kind of uh, talk through the, the process. Um, so I've got some dialogue I need to clean up, um, especially the, um, I just did it myself a voiceover, so there's some lip smacks and stuff like that that are at the beginning, the, the top and tail of each. I need to clean those up. And then also I've got preview music here. I need to clean that up as well. So again, the way this is, uh, let me just show you my organizational structure over here. I have timelines um, and I have uh, basically my, my current versions I'm working on. So this is version six right here. So in version six, you'll see this is a compound clip and I do that for mixing purposes. I'll show you later. And then inside here is the actual thing. So one thing you need to do is as you're making different versions, you need to make sure that you create a new parent clip for each compound clip as you make versions. Otherwise you're just going to be changing everything and the versions are kind of pointless. So, um, so the way I organize things, um, we have stock in this case, uh, we organize it by unlicensed and licensed. Um, so that way I can see really easily like where something comes from. For example, I can click on this and say, okay, where is this thing? Where is this thing from? And I can see it's from premiumbeat.com. I can also shift F and get right to it and say, oh, this is in my unlicensed. So this isn't licensed and the watermark gives it away as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is make a new event called stock licensed. Now inside stock licensed, what we do, we've already downloaded this and we've made a respective folder um, in our thing called a client work folder. And here stock licensed, look, I've got a stu Shutterstock purchase. Here is a premium beat purchase. So I've got everything in this folder. I've unzipped everything uh, and I just leave the zips in there it doesn't really matter and I've, I've got the folders there too so I'm going to drag this here and Final Cut's going to tell me that it's not going to import the zip no problem and I really don't need these guys right here well you know what I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to do that actually I'm going to make a folder and I'm going to put all this stuff in it So that way I can get to it if I need to. Okay, so the nice thing now is we've got this purchase here and I've got the individual items and I can always go back and, and find those. So what I need right here, this is pretty easy. I just need the full, uh, I need to select all these and make the roll music. Uh, and then here's my river of time. So let's go ahead and just pop this in here so you can see the difference. Okay, so not a lot of changes. I have a little fade out right here. Obviously the volume changes. So I'm just gonna pop this in here, copy, uh, option, command V to paste all the stuff and just gonna delete it. So here I'm gonna hit X to do the next one, Q, copy, uh, I mean do that kind of copy effects thing. Over here's a little bit trickier um, inside here because I have this little fade um, happening, but pretty much the same thing can happen, uh, copy, uh, oops, sorry, sorry. Copy all and then paste all the effects. So this one's a little weird um, in that, but I know that this is actually the end. It's kind of a fade out at the end. So I can do a similar thing, but this time instead of um, doing a regular Q, just, just add the shift key and it connects <laughs> back timed. So anyway, so then quit here okay great um, and now so the only trouble here is I need to reapply this little fade here hold down G pop this on there oops pop a little command T on there to add that awesome okay just double just spotting the levels here okay great I'm just gonna listen to this real quick sweet perfect 
Okay, so that takes care of having uh, finalized audio. Now, if you listen to this, so again, I just did this voiceover. And you know what? I did was a couple of problems. When I did it, I had the gain up way too hot on my M audio um, audio interface. So it sounds horrible. <laughs> so I have to fix that. Fortunately, I have RX7 and it deals with it. But the main thing is this thing here, if you listen to it, I don't know if you, you probably can't even hear it, but there's like a lip smack as I start, you know, preparing to read. Um, so we just need to get rid of this and there, it's all over the place. Look at all the lip smack stuff. So anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to quickly, uh, let's see, I'm going to get rid of that because I don't need that. I don't need my big old pocket audio meters. Um, and then for rolls, I'm just going to isolate this just so it cleans up the rest of the stuff. This is really cool and, and hopefully really time saving. Um, so I just, I need to top and tail all these things. Now you could drag all these things, add fades and stuff. And it's like, oh, that's kind of a pain. Or you could just be Final Cut like and do it with just your top and tail keys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and then option left bracket, click option right bracket. So see that, is that cool? Uh, left, okay. What I usually do when I'm doing audio like this is I usually turn off the roll of video because it's kind of annoying. But just for your sake, I'll go ahead and leave it on. Okay, just, what's going on there? Oops, I hit the wrong key. Sorry about that. What was I? Okay, there we go. I had command instead of option, which of course would go to the previous timeline. Okay, wow, that little lip smack I did was really loud. Okay, a little bloop right there. One thing that's really helpful when you're working with audio, turn off snapping. So, um, here's snapping right here. Oh, that's actually, wait, that's skimming. What's snapping? Oh, snapping's there, okay. Yeah, turn off snapping, it really helps to just be more precise and what you're doing. Oh, and by the way, it's really helpful if you actually click on that. It looks, looks good. Option. Let's clean this out. Oops, wrong side. Where was I? Okay, excellent. Let's see, one more right here. So again, this is just the kind of lip smack at the beginning of each thing. You can't really even hear it with the music. So, okay, that looks good. Um, okay, the other thing I'm gonna do now is I want to just grab all of the dialogue here. And now I'm going to apply some fades to it. So first of all, let's check at our fade action editing 0.5 seconds. I want it even less than that. I want it like 0.1 seconds. Um, that should be that should be decent. So I've selected all those, and I'm going to go up to clip and say adjust volume and apply fades. So now what I've got, let's zoom in on here and check it out. I've just got a wee little tiny fade on here, just to just prevent anything bizarro happening. So now, as I said before, sorry, I'm back and going too fast. Um, I got my music in here, sweet. Um, so as I said before, this is a compound clip. So let's back, let's go back to where we were. Okay, this is excellent, version six. So a couple things I needed to do on this. Um, so here's my dialogue. And the, if I go to the inspector, let me show you what I've done already. So first of all, I've put my RX-7 D-clip on this. Now one thing you need to be careful about RX-7 plugins running in Final Cut is they're really processor intensive and the fact that they run in real time is just amazing. But you really wanna limit the use of them. Normally I'd bake something in. This is a really quick project. I'm not gonna bake it in. Um, but you want to be careful about the last little element. 
to make sure it's not cut off because RX will often do that. So I'm just going to play this. Okay, I'm good. There's no problem. I don't think you can even hear that, but uh, it's no problem. So, but anyway, what I've done, again, I, I recorded it with too high a level. I pulled the threshold down to negative three as a, uh, to get rid of the clipping. It worked unbelievably. The distorted audio was just magically fixed. So the other thing I do, and this is, um, even though I could do this by hand, it works so well. I open up the channel EQ, pop a channel EQ, and I use the voice over here. And then I just pull it down a little bit so it isn't quite as strong. Um, and it just adds a little bit of punch um, right there at the, um, you know, about 2K, 1.5K, uh, which is uh, the place where, um, boy, I just forgot the name of it, semblance. It's, it's really where, where things are pronounced well. So just that little pop there and a little pop at uh, the end here and, and bring it down at 500 makes it great. And again, I just use the default one. So with that, what do I do about the music? Um, well, I adjust the levels to something somewhat decent um, and then I apply another channel EQ. So in this case, what I've done is rather broad and I've just pulled down at 1K uh, with a pretty big Q not a huge, huge Q, um, here 9 dB. And what it does is it just notches out the um, dialogue, the voiceover, so you can get the um, things a little louder on the music. And here, look, I pumped it up 2 dB. And then also it just helps with clarity and it sounds really good. So anyway, um, that is it. I should, oh, I should note as well. So typically what I like to do is I go here and just in the rolls, just turn off the video. And then you can concentrate on the audio and give yourself, you know, listen to this. What I kind of do, I kind of have my room. I know what my room sounds like. Um, and it's treated with some acoustic foam so that it isn't really reflective. And then I listen on my, um, my AirPods, just on my phone as well and that gives me a good judge because you know what on my airpods i lot watch a lot of streaming stuff um and i know what good mixing should sound like so the fact that i'm listening to it on a good reference helps me really figure out um hey is this good and most of the time i have a tendency to make the volume of the music way too loud because i love it because it's so emotional so uh, it helps me gauge that so Anyway, but turning off the, the video is just fantastic. And also, it just makes things go way faster. So anyway, hope this helps my little tour of this. And I hope you have a good day.